Human genes are what gives each of us our own unique characteristics and features. They carry the instructions that determine how we look, act, and why some of us are more prone to certain diseases than others. Researchers studying the incredible field of human genetics are learning more every day, not only about how our traits are determined and passed down, but also how to identify the genes that contribute to diseases in the human body and the methods needed to prevent them. These scientific breakthroughs are already making an impact on 21st century medicine with personalized genome testing and the first generation of genetic therapies. And it all starts here in our labs, where our researchers in the genetics department were recently ranked an incredible number two in the nation. This is where scientists like Drs. Mustafa Tekin and Stefan Zuckner are world leaders in discovering novel genes for rare genetic diseases and are working on several gene therapies that will soon reach patients. There are thousands of rare diseases, and my job is to try to come up with a diagnosis and, and start treatment. Many of these conditions are very severe, so we need to really know how a mutant gene is leading to this disease. My lab right now is trying to discover new genes that are mutated, that can cause these clinical conditions. Such an example is a severe genetic condition called Canavan disease that affects the brain. Recently, a local case diagnosed with Canavan disease in South Florida was able to be a part of a clinical trial that a gene therapy was utilized. The child is still alive and showed uh, great progress. That's why philanthropy is, is important. It's the most important driver of research in these diseases. Genetics is one of these fields that really is transforming medicine. As geneticists, what we can do is potentially uh, go in in a person and provide medications that modify how your genes act. We can correct the source of disease. For a person who may have looked for an answer for a decade, that's very exciting. Genomics can give a diagnosis. These therapies are now being developed for very few patients that exist in the world. This is a level of specialization that has never been there before. It's a genetic technology, a technology that wasn't here 10 years ago. Medicine, in a way, will become much more personalized by using these technologies. And I think this is an area where we really need to be part of. We need to invest in the future. And if we do this right, and we have the right resources, and we take some risks, then I think we have a good chance in, in five to 10 years to come up with how this could be treated. The advances in our laboratories are also leading to groundbreaking discoveries in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's. Dr. Margaret Parachek Vance and Dr. Jeffrey Vance are leading research to uncover how the risk for this debilitating disease differs among races and ethnicities and how understanding those differences could lead to preventing its progression. Our mission is to tackle complex diseases, diseases that have a major human health impact. We know where medicine is going. We know that genomics and genetics are gonna be key to the next decades of therapies. But we're never gonna make a real change unless everybody can benefit from what we do. The whole field is pulling together all information and trying to intervene as early as possible. I feel like if I go out there and I enroll people in the study, we owe them something, we owe them to find the answer. That would be awesome. What's lacking, what we don't have, is infrastructure. I mean, this is genomics. I can't tell you how often the equipment changes and where they have something newer and faster that's gonna get us closer to the truth. Our research is outstanding. And, you know, if we continue this with infrastructure support, et cetera, I mean, there's no ends to what we can do and how we can contribute to human health. Genetics is the future of medicine. It is now, and that's where all the new therapies are coming. And we're just to the edge now where we can actually start to do the therapeutic of all the information we have.
So the project I'm most excited about right now is their work on APOE4. It's been known for a while that Africans have a much less risk to develop Alzheimer's if they carry APOE4 than Europeans. So our group was able to show that it's the region around APOE4 that's controlling this protective effect. When we narrow down that small area, we'll have a therapeutic target that will lower the risk for the majority of people carrying APOE4, and that is the major risk for Alzheimer's. We're treating muscular dystrophies with a treatment, a gene therapies now, things that we've talked about for years that are finally coming within reality. So this is just some of the examples of the excitement that physicians and research are seeing for genetics in the future and how it will really drive medicine for better therapies and longer life. That's very motivating, it's very exciting. Our researchers are also moving quickly to pioneer personalized medicine techniques that will advance our understanding of certain diseases. Dr. Jacob McCauley is using large-scale genomics, storage of millions of samples, and medical records to study disease outcomes for entire communities. We have this vision of precision medicine, which means tailoring treatments and therapies at the individual level. So in order to enable that, we really have to understand the biology of disease from all walks of life. It's understood now more than ever how important it is to include individuals from all backgrounds to really have that impact and make precision medicine a reality for all individuals. Now, a lot of the work that we do in the genetics community is large-scale research and it takes lots of data to make those initial findings and then in order to understand how those findings will impact different populations is really key to then turn that into a therapeutic or a treatment. Many clinical trials aren't really being performed in diverse populations for numerous reasons, but that's one of the one things that we want to also help to enable. With philanthropic partnerships and philanthropy, I think it gives us the opportunity to help build that infrastructure that's you know, essential to all of our research goals and really translating precision medicine to reality within UHealth. The growing ability to detect and edit human genes raises important ethical questions for people and communities. Rosario Isasi is devoted to identifying the social, ethical, and policy dimensions of these novel genetic technologies that have the potential to change medicine forever. I work side by side with scientists to promote scientific and ethical integrity. We enable participants to join research and try to diminish health disparities. If something we have learned from the past is if we don't invite everybody at the table, we cannot have therapies for them. And health disparities and health inequity will continue to prevail. When we make sure that at the table they have a very diverse set of participants. That means that the discoveries of the future will be tangible for them. How we thrive is acknowledging what we can do better. And we look at the future by recognizing the histories of loss, of disability, of suffering, or exclusion, of exploitation, is raising this awareness so we understand why participants enroll or do not enroll in the studies, understanding that context. So one day, nobody will ask me the question of why your bioethicist does. It will become very obvious. The field of human genetics and genomics is undergoing a period of dynamic growth. So is our commitment to finding novel and effective treatments for genetic disorders. We are continually pursuing cutting edge ideas that will improve the health of humanity and the quality of life for so many of us. We look forward to partnering with you to continue developing this revolutionary and life-changing medical technology.